I want you all to do me a favour and to think about the ocean right now. For many of you, this is something that's blue and vast and out there, out of sight and out of mind. But for others, it's part of the everyday. But whether it's taken you this very moment to think about the ocean, we should all be doing this more often. Because I'm here to remind you that the ocean is important to us all. After all, it provides over 50% of the air we breathe, it regulates our climate, it acts as a massive carbon sink, We swim in it, it produces the food we eat, and it also holds massive economic value, whereby 80% of the world's goods are transported by the sea. And that means that at least one item of clothing or accessory you have with you watching me give this very talk has traveled here via the sea. But the ocean is changing. It's getting warmer as a result of climate change, It's getting louder as a result of human activity. We're polluting it with rubbish, such as plastic. So with such great importance, what are we doing to help protect our oceans, which is our future air after all? To help protect our ocean, we first need to better understand it. And one of the ways that we can do this is by harnessing the power of marine wildlife. And this is something that excites me. But if I was to ask you to think of an animal that lives in the ocean, what's the first thing that comes to mind? Maybe it's a funny talking sponge, or maybe it's a shark, or even a lobster or a turtle. But for me, it's a whale. In fact, it's always been a whale. Ever since back when I was a little girl who grew up on a farm, absolutely nowhere near the ocean, and wanted to become a marine biologist, and that's me there with my pet cow called Zach, It was always my dream to work with whales. But back then, I thought of whales as these massive, elusive and inaccessible creatures. And since growing up, kinda, I have been able to become that marine biologist. And I've been fortunate enough to have spent time with these beautiful creatures. And what I kind of knew but didn't really realize is that whales play massive, important roles in our environment. For example, They're capable of feeding low, and some species will poo high, spreading nutrients across the ocean with every defecation, kind of like cows on land. They are also capable of traveling to places most affected by climate change, such as the Arctic and the Antarctic. They consume the same food we eat, and they're also long-lived, with some species living over 100 years of age. And as a result, They may, over time, accumulate toxins and chemicals in their fat supplies or their blubber and may be susceptible to some of the pollution that we put into the marine environment. And because of all of this, people often talk about whales as ocean sentinels or watchguards of our ocean or the canary in the coal mine. Because often changes in whale populations may reflect changes in our underlying marine environment. And one surprising way we can learn more about these animals is by learning about their health. And in the past, to collect any sort of information from a whale, it was dangerous. We had to get on boats that were super close to whales. We also had to, in some cases, hunt whales to learn more about them. And they're dangerous to work around. So often other people would have to wait for whales to strand on beaches where we were able to access health information. But today, Whales are accessible in ways we would have never have thought possible, and collecting information from the ocean via the use of whales is getting exciting. But what if I was to tell you one of the ways we could access biological information from whales was by using drones? Now, some of you might be thinking, well, what exactly would you collect and why? Is this important research? Well, one of the things you could collect is whale poo, but This is already covered by my friend here called Gator, which is a trained whale poo sniffer detection dog. That's right, this is actually a thing. These dogs are trained to sniff out whale poo so that scientists can collect their whale poo and learn more about whale diets. And I absolutely love this. But that back end is already covered by Gator. And if we move to the top end of a whale, we could collect whale snot which is that visible plume of spray rising into the air. In fact, you've all seen whale snot before. Remember in Finding Nemo, 
where Marlon, Nemo's dad, and Dora is swallowed by the whale and then miraculously ejected through the top of the whale, through their blowhole. That's whale snot. But sorry to be the bearer of bad news. Anatomically, that ain't impossible, and uh, there's only one way out for Marlon and Dory, and it ain't pretty. <laughs> but if we move back to the top end, what whale snot is, is this information overload or a juicy biological mixture of information that we can collect from whale lungs. After all, they're mammals like you and I. And for example, we can collect bacteria, DNA, and, and hormones to learn more about their health. And so to do this, I collaborated with drone experts in industry, and together we merged science and technology to come together to create this, which is our purpose-built whale snot collecting drone. And as you can see, it has four propellers, it has a camera at the front to see what the drone sees, and it has a camera at the back, and in the middle there, there's this round plastic dish. And that dish is known as a petri dish, and that's where we collect the whale snot. And what's very unique to our drone is that this flip lid petri dish, it can actually open and close. So we can minimize collection of other sort of bacteria in the air and seawater when we go to collect whale snot. And so to do this, we hop on a boat offshore of Sydney, Australia, and we wait for northward migrating humpback whales where they're traveling from Antarctica, where they've spent the summer feeding, and then go all the way to the warm waters of the Great Barrier Reef, both places which we know climate change is occurring. And so once a whale or pot of whales is seen, the drone is launched into the air by our drone pilot and flown out into the distance. And then we wait for whales to come up and take a breath. And this is what it looks like. As the drone's in the air, goes through, collects a sample, and all those droplets that you can see, that's whale snot, and that's a juicy sample. <laughs> Excites me as a scientist. But sometimes, you could be in the right place at the right time and the whales do a pathetic breath. For example, this. The drone is ready and <laughs> What a terrible breath. Not much sample there. So what I'm trying to show you here is that not every sample collection is ideal. And in this final video, you'll be able to see just a different perspective of what we're getting by using drones. An insight into populations migrating in areas such as Sydney in Australia and as this drone turns right now, you'll be able to see these animals migrating in a pod, which as we go and attempt to collect whale snot or the rainbow, we just miss, but that's okay. So with these samples, I go back to the laboratory and extract the DNA, make more of the sample, and then we do something known as next generation sequencing. And from this very research, we've learnt three key things. First of all, we've shown that drones can make collecting health information from whales safer and less invasive. Secondly, we're able to collect baseline information on the types of bacteria living in whale lungs without having to hurt whales. And this provides a snapshot of whale health from free swimming whales, which we couldn't do in the past. And we are actually able to compare our whale snot samples with other whale snot samples collected in other parts of the world, such as Canada and America. And finally, we were found that these animals are carrying viruses, which was the first to do so by the use of a drone. Which means, at a microscopic level, these animals were capable of carrying information from one part of the ocean to another. For example, we found viruses associated with areas in Antarctica, which we collected off Sydney, Australia. And it was this very piece of information that changed the way in which I viewed these animals once again. And this shows us and demonstrates the potential of whales to be collecting information about our marine environment at microscopic levels and at levels that we may not have seen at all. So essentially, these animals are carrying information from Antarctica ready for delivery as marine mammal ocean capsules pass Sydney each year. And while this research isn't changing the world, nor is it going to protect all marine wildlife in our oceans, what this work is doing is contributing to a new level of understanding. By looking at the ocean, by studying some of the world's smallest organisms from some of the world's biggest animals on Earth to learn more about our ocean health. And if we are able to detect viruses and bacteria that love warmer environments, and we can work out that these animals are carrying this information, we can detect changes in our ocean that we can't necessarily see. And the use of drones is making our limitless ocean just that more accessible. 
And as I come to the tail end of my talk, thank you. <laughs> I love that one. You don't need to be a scientist or a drone expert to make a difference. You can make a difference by being you, by the actions you take on land. And this collectively can make a big difference for these animals. So for example, saying no to a plastic straw or using a shopping bag that's reusable and not releasing balloons into the atmosphere that eventually end up in our oceans. And if I was to ask you to think about the ocean once more, I'm sure now you might hold a new perspective. And maybe even a little smile might come about your face thinking about whales and their snot and the potential of what they could do. And for me, thinking back to that little farm girl that was wanting to be a marine biologist who once thought whales were inaccessible, I now have a new sense of wonder and will continue to ask questions about our marine ocean, harnessing the power of these marine giants so that we can better understand our ocean as it continues to change. Thank you.